Hello everybody, welcome back to the Rat Lab. Uh, it's New Year's Day, 2020. Hope everybody's had a good day, enjoyed their football games, ate their cabbage, ate their black-eyed peas, had some fun with the family. Uh, we've been playing around here in the lab today, and today I think we're going to show you our version of a baby bass on a shallow running crankbait. So stick with us, and we'll get right to it. Well, all right, everybody, today we are going to shoot my version of a baby bass. Um, we'll be using the Createx Pearl White for the belly. We'll be doing a little mashup on the greens, make a little darker green. I really like the Apple Barrel Marsh Green, and then we'll actually lighten it up just a little bit with the light green and then <clears throat> be using the wicked black createx wicked black across the back and for the stripes on this bait so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this we're going to get our pearl white and we'll get it ready to go into the gun <clears throat> Shooting from a little bit different angle today, see if we can give you a little, little better look at what we've got going on. So, you may not actually see me load the paint today. I am going to thin that white just a little bit, since it is a pearl. I'm just going to shoot this across the belly. Just up the side a little bit. About up to where that lateral line would go. That's a nice sheen there. Let me dry this real quick. Okay, so we got our pearl white applied to the belly. Good little shimmer going on there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our marsh green and our opaque light green we're going to mix it up and anytime the apple barrel paints come from Walmart there's not anything in the world wrong with them other than they're a little thick so first thing you're going to have to do is reduce them down just a hair and then I like to take a little bit of the opaque createx green and drop in there just kind of customize this a little bit to me and what I like and get that reducer all mixed in there to me it makes just a little little bit more of a bassy color mixing it with a green stir not helping you all see anything but that's kind of the color we end up with if you can see that I'm not sure if you can or not still gotta still gotta work on the lighting this is New Year's Day 2020 January 1 so First video I posted was shot on New Year's Eve. It's now New Year's Day. Figured I'd get another one set up for y'all. Might be a couple days after before you actually see it. But, and this is kind of the color we've got. So we'll just start laying it on. We'll lay it down the spine. 
and just bring it right on down the side. Just go on with a real light coat at first. All the way back to the tail. So you don't realize how often that compressor kicks on and off until you start shooting a video. <laughs> so, come on back down the sides, thicken this up a little bit, a little bit down the back. I do want to get in and around the nose a little bit. Make sure I got those eye sockets. Just kind of back to that first gill plate. Alright. Good coat there. I like the way it's transitioning down in. A little more on this side just to even it up. There we go. A little more at the tail. Alright. So. There's the beginning of our baby bass. Still got a good silvery belly. Some people like to put a little orange in the throat of it. I've done it. I like it personally. Some people don't. You really don't see any orange on a bass whenever you're... When you catch one. So let me do a quick heat set on this. And we'll set up and we'll come back and shoot some black. All right, so I am going to lay down a little scale pattern on the green. And to do that, I'm going to take this clip off. And today, we're going to be using this netting here, which is nothing more than a garlic bag from your grocery store. Uh -oh. First thing I'm going to do is hook it through that back eyelet. <clears throat> the one thing you have to remember about using this, you want to get it stretched tight around your bait, but the more you stretch it, the bigger your pattern's going to be. So, I wouldn't get too carried away with it. I'm really just going to lay this down in the green so as long as it's tied across the back, we'll be all right. I'm just going to take the alligator clips. And bunch it up. And clip it. like the way that is so I'm gonna get that out of the way and then I am gonna put a couple little clips up here at the nose and then when we shoot this I'm gonna put one more right here just to weight that down to keep it out of my way. So when we shoot this, we're going to shoot it at an angle, going back across the bait, because we just want a dusting. We don't want to paint the bait black. We just want to get a little dusting in there to make scale. So let me get the gun loaded up, and then we'll shoot the black. All right, we got our gun loaded up. Camera's readjusted a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a light just down the green. I don't want it really into the white. I'm just going to keep our gun at a 45 degree angle. And that's about all we're going to do right there. Before you pull any of your netting off or ribbon or whatever it is you're using, make sure you always do a heat set on it. Um... That fabric will hold on to that wet paint for quite a while. And you'll go to remove it, and it'll just smear it everywhere. So put a quick heat set on this. All right, we got a heat set on there. So now we'll take and remove our ribbons. 
or our fabric, whatever it is you're using to, to do this. I'll reach in this little bag and pull this out. And if you see, we got good little scale pattern going. Camera will focus. There we go. And now, what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll lay some stripes down through here and then paint our back. See what we come out with. So, I'm going to take our helping hands. And grab a hold of that bill. And grab a hold of that back eyelet. Lay her down a little bit. Let me adjust this camera just a hair. Today, we once again, hold on, sorry for the camera. Once again, we'll be using stencils from Russ Allen at Insane Custom Stencils. I've had comments that I say stencils funny. Maybe it's just because I pronounce it funny. Um, but we're going to be using a stripe wheel. And I think this is the one I want to use. I'm going to set it up here. I'm going to try to get a decent position on it so I know where it's at. So that I can do the other side the exact same way. we still got black loaded up in the gun. And I'm probably not going to come all the way forward. I'm probably just going to start about three stripes back and probably run to that one. And I'm probably not even going to use all of the stripe. Let's see how this comes out. So, see what we got here. We still got black loaded. Come in and... Use about three quarters of that stripe. And like I said, I think we're going to come back to about that one. So we're not using the first two or the last two for the most part. And we get our stripe pattern. You can kind of see that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. dry this stencil off and which one we got here and lay it in just behind the eye and right about there carried away with that front one but I think we'll be all right first time trying to work around this camera trying to give you a different angle than I gave you last time but I'm not sure I like this one much better but we're just gonna keep improving we're gonna keep making this better and we'll get that out of here <coughs> And put my binder clip back on here because this is what I'm really used to using. Now we're going to shoot down the back. We've got plenty of black still loaded in the gun. So we're just going to start shooting down the back. Darkening it up. And just bringing it down the sides. Until we connect with our stencils that we just had a little bit right there 
on the tail. And this is kind of what we came up with. Let's see if I can shed some more light on this real quick. All right, there. Well, I'll give you a little more light. Kind of see what we got going on here. Yeah, you can see that scale pattern in there, the silver belly and the stripes. So, what we need to do at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and shoot a little black in those eyes, and blacken up those cheeks just a little bit. I still got black loaded up. Bring it under the nose. See what we got going here. All right. That just about takes care of it. Let me put a heat set on this. We'll let it dry for just a minute. And I think on this one, we'll go ahead and add the eyes to it. And uh, we'll go from there. Be right back with you. All right, it's time to add some eyes to our to our little baby bass here. Got a couple, couple here. And get our super glue gel out. I do like using the gel. I feel like it's a little more accurate, especially for somebody that's as shaky as I am using gel when I got too much right there. So. Go ahead and make some of that. I'll put some of it over here. And that should be more than enough for to hold that in place. I haven't moved to KBS yet. I'm still using epoxy. So KBS is in the very near future. So, get this eye stuck in here. Like that. So really, I just need them to stick until the epoxy goes back on it. Get that one. I'm stuck in Yeah. Alright. Get a little more dab in there. Alright. There we go. Ah, I can see that eye standing out in there. Probably would have preferred to go with a a gold eye, but after going through today's selection, I didn't see any gold eyes, so I have to put an order in for some some more eyeballs. So there's what we got right now. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the way I do my epoxy. Uh, you've if you've done this you've done it before if you've watched any videos you've probably seen it before um, but I do use the Bob Smith epoxy it is available at Hobby Lobby 
Um, it's not super hard to find. It does dry clear, has good results. You can go back for several, several years on Tackle Underground or wherever you want to go look. And it has worked out well for people for quite a while. So that is what I've been using for the last six or eight months since I started doing this. Um, like I said, however, I am going to put in an order this week for some KBS and give it a shot. I think it's got some really good advantages, a lot faster. Um, we're building more and more baits here, so, um, time is of the essence, uh, to some degree, since I do work a a full-time job on top of playing around with this so but I am going to change camera angles for this so let me get that set up for you and we'll throw a coat of epoxy on here real quick and you can kind of see what the final product's going to look like all right first thing we're going to do is we're going to get us an acid brush uh, I do pick these up at Harbor Freight, so they're not the best in the world, which an acid brush isn't the best in the world anyway, and I am going to come through and kind of pull on it and see if I've got any loose bristles, knock the dust down of it, and then I'm going to take a pair of needle nose. And I'm going to squeeze down on that crimp on both sides of it a little bit just to kind of tighten them up. And then I'm going to go through that same procedure again. Those little strays that are hanging out here, I don't worry too much about as long as they're, as long as they're stuck in there and not coming out, I don't worry about them. I like to take these little Dixie cups and I like to mix my epoxy right in the top of them. So I'm gonna take a portion of that one. And a portion of that one. Just about out of this, but I've got some more over there. Pops up the stick here. We'll mix that up really good. Said I've been using the Bob Smith. I researched it. There's a lot of people out there to tell you to use the DevCon if you're going to go the epoxy route. Uh, you can buy it off of Amazon. I had no luck finding it in Central Oklahoma at Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware. It didn't matter where I went; they didn't have it. I have used Bob Smith for other hobbies building rockets model airplanes you name it i've used bob smith it's always been good i just wasn't sure about the clarity and after doing the research and looking around and there are other people that were perfectly happy with it i've been using it so far so good so that's what we're going to continue to use until we switch did about mess up here. I didn't pull the tape off this bill, so we'll do that real quick. Always make sure that you pull your tape off your bill before you epoxy it. You can only imagine how that works out if you don't. And then one other thing we've got to do here. Because this is it. This is 
This is Lake Rat Tackle. First bait in 20. So, Lake Rat Tackle 20. Number one. All right, now we got that done. Get our brush. I like to fill my brush up with epoxy. And I'll pull off the extra after we're done. First thing I'll do is just run her down the back. Load this brush up. Normally takes about two times of loading this brush up to get enough epoxy on there. And then your brush will just start flowing naturally. Just a little bit more here. But you want to make sure you get down in all those gill plates. And then once I get her, get a good thick coat on there. Make sure I've got all the painted surfaces. Run right here. Hope I didn't pull too much of that out of the camera. Now I'll start shedding the epoxy off of the brush back onto the cup. And this is where we'll start making just real slow passes, pulling the epoxy off. All the excess. I do not use a drying wheel. Never had one to use. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. If you want to build one up out of a rotisserie cooker or a disco ball motor or whatever, I actually would highly recommend it. I've just never done it. I take a little more time with my epoxy and just make sure that I pull all the excess off of it and then when I hang it up right above my head here I'm typically still working on something else so I can kind of keep an eye on it and if I if I see that it's going one way or the other and there's a hair that's one thing you got to look out for with the acid brushes that hair out of there if I do see that the epoxy is starting to run, I will flip it around, put it in a new position, and let that epoxy start to go the other way as it starts to set up. Uh, this Bob Smith epoxy, I believe, is 20 min 30 minutes. However, you do not have that much time to work with it. And like I said, I... I probably take a little more time than most well, I'm really looking forward to working with the KBS Just making one slow dip into the KBS and hanging it up and I could have had another bait almost painted in the time that it took me to set up to do this but if I'm doing this for a lot of baits, I'll mix up a lot of epoxy. I can do probably three of them before my epoxy starts to set up for the most part. So now I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to run it through my eyes for my hooks. Just to make sure they're clear. You can knock it out of there later, but it's way easier to do it right now. And then for my line guide... Run that through there one more time, and we're going to take a quick look over. Have a look at it. Lake Rat Tackle 2020. This is the first one of this year. Oh. 
I will take a I'm gonna take this little hook here and I'm gonna hang it by the nose and I'm gonna hang it up here where you can't see and I will sit there and just kind of keep an eye on it while we do other things I'll set this to the side let it dry up throw these away I'll be right back with you all right so there you have it the first bait out of the rat lab in 2020 um, who'd have ever thought we'd all made it here so anyway I pretty much showed you everything from start to finish um, the only thing I didn't show you was laying the base coat on I just use a I just use an opaque white um, from createx uh, nothing special there are on occasions where I will put some pearl in there or something if, if that needs to happen. But most of most all of my base coats are just going to be a, a Createx white. However, I did uh, I did shoot some in black today. Base coated them in black, and we'll be showing you those videos here over the next few days. Um, once we get around to that, so I want to thank you all for for stopping by. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Share it with your friends. It helps us all out. If there's anything that you want to see from me, let me know. Um, I don't know what you want to see unless you interact with me a little bit. If you hate my videos, tell me. If you love them, tell me. Um, we're here just to we're here to help. If I can help you along or I can make you something, then then we're doing our job and we're all having fun and we're all fishermen. We're all outdoorsmen. We're here to help each other out, and that's what I'm here for. So, anyway, New Year's Day 2020. I want to thank you all for being here. I do want to put a shout-out to Russ Allen at Insane Custom Stencils once again uh, for making some awesome, awesome stencils. We used them again today, and you'll see a lot of them in the future. So, you all have a good 2020. We'll see you later this week. Thank you.